be talking about a lot of different things. We're going to be talking about stress, self-regulation, different coping skills you can be using, connection, and social awareness. So when we think about all of these skills all together, you know, the mind immediately goes to the different ways that we cook. So all of the different ingredients that we use and essentially how everything comes together so we can have one refined dish. So today we're going to be cooking with Battlefield High School Counseling. And so the reason we're doing this today is essentially to bring everyone back to focus on what coping skills you are using and how you're staying connected during these unprecedented times. So before we get started, just make sure that you have taken the pretest for this lesson. So there's a pretty easy way to do this. If you just take a picture of the QR code that's shown below and you can log in using your Microsoft 365 credentials, feel free to stop the video and complete the pretest before you get started. What you will learn today is what stress does to your body and mind. So what is it and how does it actually manifest both physically and mentally? The second thing you'll learn about is self-regulation. So regulation is how to essentially figure out how to um, either consciously or subconsciously come back to an even balanced place. We're also going to be discussing coping skills. So what specific ways do you actually cope with stressors that come up in your life? The fourth is why is connecting to other people important? And then that ties into social awareness and social justice as our last point. So why understanding your beliefs and experiences and the beliefs and experiences of others is important. So we're going to start off today by talking about stress. So stress is something that simmers in the body. So as you take a look at the graphic on your screen here, think about all the different ways that you feel stress in your body. So it can start off in the head where you have all of these different aches and pains and it really, you know, is able to kind of filter down through the rest of your body as the stress builds and builds because we know that stress does build if it doesn't, if it isn't properly released by using effective, healthy coping mechanisms. So when you hear the word simmer, so as I said, it doesn't necessarily need to all explode at once, but when stress starts to simmer in your body, that means it's something that you are sitting with. It's just below the boiling point while something is heating. So when things are simmering within us, it's essentially just before we get to our own boiling point. So we want to be aware of these physical symptoms of stress. So the difficulty sleeping, increased heart rate, tight tightening of the chest or quick breathing, loss of appetite, uh, sweaty palms or trembling. These are all warning signs that we are pushing ourselves to the maximum. However, stress also really affects how you think. So not all thoughts are created equal. So there are different kinds of thoughts where they are, they might feel productive, then they might feel like they are pushing you to be better. So um, you might think that overthinking and um, worrying about something all the time is helping you because it's preparing you for something. However, we really see that as something that's called a cognitive distortion. So it's something that is, is simmering in your mind as adding to your stress, adding to that boiling point. And so we see some examples down below. If I don't pass this test, I will fail this class. And then I will drop out of high school 
and I won't amount to anything and I will live with my parents forever. So that's an example of catastrophizing where you start from one thought and it ends up way down the road thinking about all of the bad things that could potentially happen. My friend didn't respond to my snap, so they must hate me and be mad at me. Or, I'm worried that my parents are going to lose their jobs. So some thoughts, some thoughts are sitting in us and some thoughts are, are valid. All thoughts are valid, of course, but it's just the way we focus on turning down the heat or giving less attention to the thoughts that will get us through the day, right? So um, if in your own mind, where are you feeling like there is a lot of heat? You are feeling like you're simmering and you're about to boil over. So in the right-hand corner, what is one thought that could use less heat? Or you could just dial it back and potentially give a little less attention to anything that is no longer serving you. And so what happens if we do boil over? What do you do? So unfortunately, there is no such thing as, you know, getting the fire extinguisher and, you know, panicking when it's in your mind or it's, you know, become a physical manifestation of your stress. So in times of stress, what we sometimes do is we go into the fight, flight, or freeze response. And so there's a video up in the top, in the top section there that you are free to watch in your own time. But essentially what the fight, flight, or freeze response is, is it's the body's natural way of saying, I need to take a step back and refocus on what I can do to control the situation and what I can't do to control the situation. Is there something that I can't change and how do I start to make peace with that? So, you know, that response is really just um, whether or not you kind of freeze in the moment or you run away from the, the feeling or the triggering event or you fight through it. So these are all just things that we want you to be aware of while you're experiencing stress because the better you understand your own stress, the easier it is to handle it and to know what to do when it happens the next time. So food for thought in the right-hand corner. What is the first thing to do when your amygdala says danger? And so the amygdala is all about the emotion. It's all about the emotion that we feel in our brain. And so when the amygdala is, is overwhelmed, what do we do? Well, I'll tell you, we take a step back and we, we really start to think about what is on our plate. What are we facing immediately? And what resources do we need to get through it? Do we need to involve someone else or can we take care of it on our own? This brings us to coping skills. So this is how you can handle things on your own if you are starting to feel as though things are building for you and um, you want to be able to take care of yourself. So there are so many different ways to use coping skills. There are so many coping skills and different things work for different people. So we like to think of it as a stir fry because a good stir fry uses many ingredients. So just imagine how gross a stir fry of, say, just broccoli would be. So when you think about different coping skills that you use, try and think about exploring coping skills from different groups. So there are different groups that are shown here on the screen. So Self-soothing, so different ways to actually soothe your senses, whether that's smelling a good candle or, um, you know, chewing a, chewing a piece of gum or listening to some soothing music or watching a soothing video, anything like that. Opposite action right below, 
doing something that is opposite of your impulse that is a more positive action. So if you are feeling stressed, watching a really good movie, watching a funny movie that will make you laugh or um, reading affirmative statements, and that can be even as simple as finding a positive self-care Instagram page that you can look through when, when things are feeling really tough. Mindfulness below, tools for centering yourself and staying grounded. So these can be, you know, these can be really effective tools to focus on how your body is responding to different stressors, focusing on how you might be able to physically ground yourself in order to mentally ground yourself through meditation or yoga. On the other side, distraction taking your mind off of the problem for a little while. And so the focus here isn't to take your mind off of the problem forever, but it takes your mind off of the problem until you have you until you feel better equipped and prepared to then attack the problem and take care of it. So you can do this, you can either read or watch Netflix, you can scroll on social media if that is something that brings you peace and is just something that you can mindlessly do, maybe. Emotional awareness. So emotional awareness is essentially how to identify and start to express some of the feelings and some of those things that are simmering inside of you. So you can do this through journaling or blogging or drawing. This is a really creative, um, naturally a really creative way to express yourself, but even just starting to talk about the things that are coming up in, in your life with, with a trusted friend or um, a safe adult is really, you know, just a way to start identifying why and how you're feeling. And so this last part is crisis planning. So this is just, you know, for when, you know, keeping, keeping something in your back pocket for a rainy day, if you aren't feeling like your coping skills are enough to handle the feelings that you're feeling. So the most immediate thing that we think of here is who can I who can you go to in your life who is a safe person? Whether that's um, you know your family members as listed here, or a family friend, or even a friend's friend's family member who is an adult just trying to find adult resources who can keep an eye on you and talk you through any difficult times. And so other, other crisis planning tools that we have, of course we have 911, we have working through therapy, and we also have some emergency hotline numbers listed at the end of this presentation. So now that we've discussed possible skills that you can add to your own stir fry, what are your new favorite ingredients? What are things that you're, you've been simmering with and how are you feeling like you might want to expand in terms of utilizing coping skills? Now we're moving into connection. So we're starting to move more into how we connect with the world around us, which is you know a nice segue from talking about coping skills because Connection, now more than ever, is something that is really important, something we really value. And I think we're seeing that more and more the longer we are in um, the quarantine period for COVID-19. So especially in times of stress, we need to connect with our people, our families, and our community to feel well and healthy and whole. So be sure to explore what connection looks like in a time of social distancing? How do we connect when we are supposed to be physically apart? So first part here, self-care. Part of being able to connect with others is knowing what we need ourselves. So using self-care to seek support and help for yourself when you know that you need it. Number two, peers. Connecting with trusted peers and looking out for each other. Which leads to number three, practicing inclusion. Looking out for staff or students or peers who, who need help 
or are marginalized and could use some grace during this time. Number four, trusted adults. Identify some trusted adults. Who can you go to to lean on, share your concerns, and seek help? Who is available to you both at school and at home? And speaking of school, number five, get connected. We want you to feel connected and that you have a place beyond our doors. So join clubs with like-minded and diverse students. So some examples, Black Student Union. You can join one of the leadership classes, etc. There are so many options for us at Battlefield. We are so fortunate. And the last is community connection. So look for the opportunities to change school climate through activism because every single piece on this screen is a very important piece to feeling more well, feeling whole as we navigate these unprecedented times. So on this screen now, there is actually a worksheet. So as you look on the left side, 10 minutes to recognize the good stuff. So all of the good things that are going on for you currently. Because as we mentioned in the very beginning of this presentation, there are a lot of things that are simmering within us right now. However, it's, it's, not, it's not where we need to focus all of our attention because feeling well is focusing is part, part of focusing on the positive because it has to be intentional sometimes. So complete the 10 minutes um, to recognize the good stuff and think about current good things. Identify achievements or areas of, of good in your life, areas of positivity. And so it's, this is meant to highlight your feeling of connection both to yourself and to others. So think about it. What good is coming? What is on your horizon? And we, again, as we mentioned, you can absolutely take time to pause this. If this is what you think you are needing right now, pause this and jot down some thoughts. Now moving more into social justice. So in order to feel connected to our community, we need to be aware of what's happening and we need to be sensitive to the needs of others because we all have different experiences that influence our thoughts, feelings, actions, connections to others and, and our sense of safety. So it's key to really become aware of different individuals' needs and experiences within our community. So we, we need to be working together to foster and support equity, and we need to call attention to barriers of opportunities for individuals within our communities. So that's, that's the social justice piece. And so bringing that awareness, it starts with, with you as, as a student. So, um, you know, the first part is really knowing yourself. So reflecting on your own values and experiences. The second is listening. So sometimes we think we have an understanding of what our peers, our friends, acquaintances have experienced, but listening means allowing others to share their experiences, even if it's uncomfortable for you to hear. When we truly listen to another person's experience, it means that we hear them in a non-judgmental way. We give our full attention to the speaker instead of planning what we will say next. So just truly being present. So we want to listen. We want to learn about the experiences of others and to understand their experiences instead of just agreeing with them or idly nodding, right? So we can ask them meaningful questions to better understand, which, which leads right into our learn piece. So after we are actively listening to the experiences of others, we learn to understand by showing empathy. 
Empathy builds a connection between people by showing that you understand or are trying to understand another person's feelings. So some examples of empathy are saying, me too, I feel what you are feeling, I understand you. Empathy does not saying you know exactly what they've been through, but that you're sensitive to what they're feeling about their experience. So I'm not sure if you've heard the expression, take a walk in their shoes, but this refers to empathy. It helps people feel supported, included, connected, and cared about. And it's a very important part of social justice. And so that, after we practice empathy and kind of hone those skills, is when we start to grow and evolve. And so as you reflect on your own experiences and beliefs and become aware of the experiences of others, you know, you as a whole community can bring forth social awareness and change through activism because social justice acknowledges that all members of a community should have their rights and freedoms respected. So students can connect with each other through school clubs and groups which focus on awareness, equity, and inclusion. So an example of activism would be creating a PSA, public service announcement, for why diversity should be celebrated. And maybe teaching students how to identify, respond to, or correct microaggressions. So microaggressions being the different ways that we interact with people, even when we don't think that we are interacting with them in, in the way that um, it's, it's coming across. And so the next piece is advocacy. So how to actually put everything that we just spoke about in terms of social justice into action. So now that we've spoken a little bit about how stress impacts you, why emotional regulation is important, feeling everything in your body, and how to engage with coping skills, this is kind of the next step in the natural progression because advocacy involves speaking up for and taking action to support issues in which you believe. So you've done the work to be thinking about what you need, what you require, and now you are able to give back and be um, a more active part of your community. And so we've listed a few ways here that you can become the head chef. You can take action. And so these points are um, just some discussion items for you to be thinking about. And so um, the counseling department will be hosting office hours. And of course, if you are watching this at a later time and the office hours have since passed, please know that you can always reach out to your personal caseload counselor over email to, to really process everything that we've, we've talked about today. And so as I mentioned, we do have a list of emergency resources here. So if you want to go ahead and pause this to take a picture of this, just so you have this on your phone for if and when you or a friend need it, just so you have it, I would absolutely encourage it. This is posted elsewhere, but we want to make sure that, you know, as you're processing some of these heavier things, you have resources at your fingertips. And so we also want you to have the contact information for your school counselor, your, your specific caseload counselor. So your Battlefield School Counselor is listed on the left-hand column. And so in parentheses are the last names that their caseload covers. So if you ever have any questions that you want to you know, figure, figure out and sort through with your counselor, please feel free to email them. They, they want to understand, and we in the department really understand how, how much of a toll this is taking on our students, and we want to be accessible. We want to be here to support you in whatever you need moving forward. And so the best way that we can identify that is, again, 
by having you take this post test now that you have learned a little bit more about stress, emotional regulation, um, different ways to stay connected, different coping skills, because we want to make sure that you are getting what you need during this time of incredible uncertainty. So again, if you want to either, um, if you want to take a picture of this using a QR code and log in using your Microsoft 365 credentials, uh, I would I would absolutely encourage you to do this. We are requiring students to do this, so please get this done. Um, and again, if you have any questions at any time, please just let your counselor know or attend one of the office hour sessions. But again, thank you for taking the deep dive with us because we recognize that some of these things are are hard to think about, hard to talk about, but the more you think about it, the more you talk about it, the more processing you have under your belt, and you can start to think about where, where you play a role in all of this, right? So we are happy to support you through it and um, eager to hear from you if there is ever anything that we could be doing that would be helpful, beneficial. But uh, again, take care and we hope to hear from you soon.